All right, now that you've learned how to solve your trust calcs, we're going to show you a way that you can easily um, use this software in order to solve it for you quite quickly. Um, so when you open up MD Solids, we're going to go underneath the trusses section here. And we're going to set up this um, so we can build a new trust. And what you have to do is set up a grid um, so that you can connect the dots, if you will. Uh, it doesn't really let you do freeform things. So when you set up your grid, it's important that you have the right size or the right scaling, the right proportions. So I'm going to say new truss. And then what I'm going to do here is I want to set up my horizontal and my vertical spacing. So we're going to do 10 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we'll do 5 a piece here. So when we create that, you can see our spacing is in 10 units. It's not feet or inches or anything like that. It's just kind of a proportion. Um, what we're going to do is create the trust that we solved uh, and then click compute and it's going to solve it all for us, which is going to be um, a really nice feature. So uh, it's important that when you create the members that you start and stop the member where there would be another interaction with like another member. So if I went and drew a member all the way across here and then I tried to put a member in the middle here, it, it wouldn't allow us to connect. So we're going to go. Uh, and looks like I made a little bit of a mistake, so I want to actually make this one too. So I can go and say erase, and I can drag over top of that and create. So I'm going to make that two, and then I'm going to go ahead and make this three tall. Two over here, connect this, connect that, connect this. Okay, so we have our members created. Now what we need to do is add in our supports, and you can put in as many supports as you really want to. They only will happen at a joint, so I can't put it right in the middle here unless I separate these two into di two different members. Um, what's important to know is that you have to have a pin support and a roller support. You can have multiples, but you have to have at least one pin and one roller support for this to work. Um, and what we do here is we click the joint and we drag in the direction of what our reaction force would be. So notice that when I click and drag down, it puts in a roller because a roller support will only have one reaction force. All right. So I want to put a support here and here. So what I like to do is I put in the two roller supports first. I put in one reaction force here and one here. And then I go ahead and I can add another reaction force here and that changes it to a pin support. So by just clicking and dragging one direction, it creates a roller support. When I click and drag in um, the opposite direction, the Y or the X, then it creates that pin support. So I don't want that, so I'm going to go ahead and erase that. So now that I have my members in here, uh, I also want to put in the loads. So I'm going to apply the load exactly where they happen here. So this was 100. And again, it doesn't give us pounds or newtons. Um, they're just proportions. And I also have 100 here as well. So I have everything I need now to go ahead and compute. Um, notice that this button just appeared um, before it wasn't there. So you can go back in the video and check to see if, in fact, it wasn't there. Um, it's only going to let us compute this when we have the proper things. Uh, it does run through our static determinancy, so which is that 2j is equal to m plus r. So 2 times our joints is equal to the members plus the reaction forces. If it's not statically determinant, it will either not allow this compute button to pop up, or when you hit compute, it will say, this trust is not statically determinant. We can't actually solve this one using the math that we have. All right, so I have everything I need. I can go ahead and hit compute. Uh, and you notice that it changes the colors. It lets us know the compression is this orangish color. The tension is in this blue color. And sometimes you're gonna find some that come up in a pink color. Um, and those are the ones that are basically, they're saying that when I apply these outside forces, these applied forces to this truss, it's not affecting those members at all, all right? And again, this is a static truss. So we're applying this force here and here, and we're saying, how does that affect each one of these members here, all right? Um, one of the things that I like to use this for is creating practice problems. So knowing that um, sometimes we make mistakes, it's nice to go through here, create the truss first, and then have that, um, answer key with you as you're going over those practice problems in class and or assigning those for homework. All right. So if you need to change anything, what you do is you just go back 
um, select trusses again here, and then you can go back and edit or change things. Notice that the, the computed values are gone here. So if I want to change this 100 pound force, I can go back and erase it and say, you know what, I want to make this actually a 200 pound force. And I want to see how that affects the truss when I solve it. And I can see the different loads that are, are applied. All right. So that's MD Solids um, creating trusses using MD Solids.